Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be discussing the early councils of the Church and how doctrine developed in those early times. Officially, there have been 21 ecumenical councils in Church history, but I think the first 10 will be enough for this season. Today, we'll be discussing the second official ecumenical council, the first council at Constantinople. At the time this council was held, Constantinople was the capital of the Roman Empire, and had been for over 50 years. It was an ancient city, once called Byzantium, then renamed New Rome and made the capital of the empire in 324 AD. In 330 AD, it was renamed again to Constantinople after the Emperor Constantine, who lived there at the time. Many emperors, however, had come and gone in the time since Constantine, by 381 AD, when this council was held. The emperor at the time was Theodosius, a very successful and faithful leader who I may decide to do a whole episode on someday, and he called the council in May. 150 Catholic bishops came to attend, as well as 36 bishops who'd given in to heresies, mostly permutations of Arianism, but there were other heresies being dealt with at the time, too. In fact, condemning various heresies that had been popping up was one of the biggest things dealt with at the council. Some of those dealt with were Arianism, who denied the divinity of Jesus, the Pneumatomachy, who denied the divinity of the Holy Spirit, Sabellianism, which taught that the three divine persons were just modes of God, like different roles being played, and Apollinarism, which taught that Jesus only had a divine mind or soul, but not a human one. All of these positions were condemned, and the Nicene Creed was added to, making it into what it is today. At the time, it was called the Nicene-Constantinopolitan Creed, though that title would later be abbreviated back to Nicene Creed, even though it was different from the original Nicene Creed. It was also forbidden to ban the Nicene Creed so that it would remain in force. Rules were passed forbidding bishops to confuse the faithful by interfering in each other's dioceses, or even leaving their own to do any church business unless invited to do so. The Bishop of Constantinople was declared to have privileges of honor, second to the Bishop of Rome himself, also known as the Pope. Rules were set down for how to bring grievances against bishops so that issues of their character or religion wouldn't come up when dealing with crimes by individual people and other personal concerns. However, if someone tried to bring a grievance against a bishop on religious matters specifically, the accuser needed to be examined to make sure they weren't a heretic trying to harm an Orthodox bishop. Means of receiving repenting heretics back into the church were outlined, and a fake bishop and his group of followers had to be condemned. But on the whole, the First Council of Constantinople addressed the issues of its time in broader categories, and could do so without creating any new creeds, per se, or too many new canons of church law. In fact, the number of canons that we know of from that council are less than half of those produced by the council at Nicaea, and of those, the historical reliability of some is in question. Not everything in church history, sadly, has the same level of support as the Gospels being written about by multiple sources at once across the whole known world. Still, the Council accomplished an awful lot in that small number of canons, concluding that Jesus was God, that the Holy Spirit was God, that the three persons of God were really distinct persons, and that Jesus had both a human and divine mind. Next, the Council of Ephesus. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.